Brioche, you ready for clue two? We've got our cuff and our leg, section one. Stitchy, do you want to play with clue two? We got so much more knitting to come. So we're gonna do another leg section. We got our zigzags. We're gonna do some other fun slip stitches. And this week we're gonna get to our heel, our fun heel techniques. So as you follow clue two instructions, make sure you follow the right sock instructions on your right sock. So if you only have one sock in progress, that's your right sock. So keep on following those right sock instructions. If you have your right sock and your left sock going at the same time, simultaneously, pay close attention and make sure you continue the left sock instructions on your left sock, okay? So make sure you're following the right instructions. There's two sets of instructions this week, one for the right sock, one for the left sock. If you decided to do that, if you're only knitting the right sock, you can do this twice, okay? You don't have to knit the mirror image socks. Just uh, follow these instructions to continue following the lines of those contrast blast details. And let's get to this week's techniques. You can skip ahead at any time in the video with the timestamps linked down below. Right stitch. If something's easy for you, then just skip ahead to the heel or the heel turn. Is there a heel turn? I think I spoiled something. So keep on watching for all those fun clue to techniques and I'll see you at the end of this video for a full reveal of how the sock looks. Leg section two, woven slips. We're going to do more slip stitches, carrying the main color and contrast color along the inside of the sock, like this. Make sure that as you carry your yarns and you stripe colors, it's not too tight, not too loose. Round one, make sure you're looking at the right sock instructions. Hold the right sock in your hand, which means those lines, those zigzags, are slanting to the right. If your zigzags are slanting to the left, then you're holding your left sock and you need to follow the left sock instructions. I'm going to show you the right sock. Round one, using contrast color. Make sure your sock looks just like mine. Using contrast color, knit 10, slip two with yarn in back. Knit 10 stitches, all of the main color stitches and those two contrast color stitches, 10. Slip two with yarn in back and repeat. Do that all the way until you reach the end of your round. Knit 10, slip two, knit 10, slip two. That was 10. Now I'm changing my needle for the double pointed needle knitters and slipping two with yarn in the back. Keep on going and I'll see you at the end of the round. I just completed round one, working the knit 10, slip two. Now for rounds two through four, this is the next three rounds, we're going to purl 10, slip two with yarn in back. So bring the yarn forward to purl. All of those contrast color stitches will be purled. We're gonna get a really beautiful texture for this next leg section. If you hold the yarn in your right hand, then just make sure the yarn is in front to purl. I just purled 10 stitches right here and bring the yarn to the back to slip to with the yarn in back. Then bring the yarn forward to purl 10. Keep on following the instructions. You'll do this for the next three rounds. So you have that knit round with the slips and the next three rounds, you'll have one, two, three more rounds with the purl 10 slip two. You're always purling the same 10 stitches and slipping those main color stitches for rounds two through four. I just worked rounds one through six of leg section two, working four rounds with the contrast color and only two rounds of the main color. This is different from that first leg section. So I just knit two rounds with my main color, really easy, just knit all the stitches for two rounds, rounds five and six with the main color, drop the main color on top and bring the contrast color from below to work round seven using contrast color. We're going to work four rounds with the contrast color. The first round will be knitting and slipping 
and then the next three rounds will be purling and slipping. So you want to set up with a knit round with the slips, and then you're going to purl the stitches to get this reverse stockinette texture. Round seven using contrast color, knit four, slip two with yarn in back, knit six, one, two, three, four, five, six, repeat, knit four, one, two, three, four, slip two with yarn in back, knit six. So make sure you pay close attention to this section. The next time you slip stitches, it's going to be in the middle of where the previous slip stitches were. So do you see where you slipped stitches in the previous contrast color rows? Right here and over there. Now the new slip is gonna be in the middle. These were the previous ones, this is the new one. So follow the rows closely, make sure you're working four rows, getting this reverse stockinette stitch texture with your contrast color, and only two rows with your main color. This section's quite easy, and I've showed you all the techniques, so you can go ahead and skip ahead using the timestamps linked down below to watch the heel flap of the video. I'm gonna keep on going and show you what this finished woven slips section looks like. Keep on going with your right sock. This is what the completed leg section two should look like of the woven slips. I'm working on my right sock and I'm ready to do the heel flap. Keep your colors attached, main color and contrast color. The heel flap works with half of your stitch count. So I'm working size three. So I'm going to work with the first 42 stitches of my sock. So you'll only be working with half the stitches and then these other half of the stitches over here, just leave them on the needle. Leave them on your DPNs or leave them on your circular needle. We'll work with those later. Using main color, row one, right side, knit, and then you will, you will slip one with yarn in front. I need to knit 41 for size three, but you might need to knit 29 or 35 or 47. So follow your pattern closely along with this video. And if any of these rows are easy for you, just skip ahead using the timestamps linked down below to any special techniques later on in this section. Using the main color knit, I'm knitting 41, but knit as many stitches as it says. And I'll see you at the end of this row. I am at the end of row one. I just knit 41 and then bring the yarn forward to slip one with yarn in front. So that should be half of your stitches. Turn to work row two, wrong side. I'm just gonna show you to make sure that you're doing the heel flap at the right time. You should have eight, three, four, five, six, seven, eight contrast color stripes from that woven slips section. So you just finished four rounds of your contrast color, and then we're doing the heel flap with the main color. It should look like that. Row two is really easy. We're going to knit one, knit that first stitch. Again, we're only working with half of the stitches for the heel flap. Leave these on the needles for later, the other half of the stitches. So I knit one on row two, purl 40, slip one with yarn in front. Follow your pattern closely. You might need to purl 28 or 34, but basically you're purling all of the stitches, these half, half of your stitches, until you reach that final stitch right there. Purl on the wrong side. At the end of row two, you purled to that last stitch with the yarn in front, slip one, slip one with yarn in front. Row three, right side, Again, we're only working with half of your stitches using the contrast color. We're going to carry contrast color and main color along the edge while striping colors. And you don't have to do anything fancy. You don't have to do any twisting or anything. Just bring the contrast color to knit. We're going to knit one with the contrast color, row three. Slip one with yarn in back, knit one to last stitch. 
And by last stitch, I mean this stitch right here. Forget about the other half of the stitches. We're going to ignore those. All of the instructions for the heel flap are only referring to half of your total stitch count. So contrast color, slip one with yarn and back, knit one. Slip one with the yarn and back, knit one. Slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one. Really easy. For you English style knitters, just slip one purlwise with the yarn and back and knit one. Do this until you reach the last stitch, which is the last stitch when we're looking at half of our total stitches. So this is the last stitch. We're only looking at half the stitches for the heel flap. Keep on going with your contrast color. At the end of row three, I just did a knit one and there's one more stitch to slip that last stitch with yarn in front. And by last stitch, remember we're only talking about half of our total stitches. Turn around to work row four, wrong side. The other half of your stitches, they're just hanging out. They just gotta wait, they gotta wait till later. Knit one. Knit one, slip one with yarn in front to last stitch. Knit one, slip one with the yarn in front. Knit one, slip one with the yarn in front. If you're holding the yarn in your right hand, you just knit one. You need to bring the yarn forward to slip. Take the yarn to the back to knit. Knit one, slip one with yarn in front. Knit one, slip one with yarn in front. Knit one. You're always working the same color stitch, that contrast color stitch, and you're always slipping the same stitch, that main color stitch. So with the contrast color, you're always working that same color, and you're always slipping the main color. Knit one, slip one with yarn in front. Keep on going to the end of row four. At the end of row four, knit one, slip one with yarn in front. There should be one more stitch and you also slip that final stitch with yarn in front. So at the end of row four, those last two stitches are slipped and your yarn is in front. It might feel a little bit weird, but just do exactly what it says. I still have the half of my stitches on two DPNs. If you wanna only work on one DPN, you could place all of these stitches, half of your stitch count on one needle. And that might make it easier to work if all your stitches are on one needle, but I'm gonna keep them on my two needles just because. Row five, right side, using main color. When you use the next color, just drop the old color and bring the new color up to knit. You don't have to do anything fancy. Just carry the yarns along the edge. There's no special technique there. Using main color, knit to last stitch. So these are really easy rows. You're knitting all of the stitches with your main color. And we're going to start seeing this really cute polka dot effect with those pearl bumps. I just love this stitch pattern. So it's important to know with your main color, we're always going to knit on the right side and purl on the wrong side with your main color, making little stockinette stitches, just like we did for the woven slips. And it's that contrast color that we're gonna do the slip stitches. Look at that. This is gonna be such a fun little heel flap texture detail. Keep on going rows five and six with your main color. Really easy rows. I'm at the end of row six, wrong side, purling to the last stitch and slip one with yarn in front. At the end of every row, we're always gonna slip one with yarn in front. And on the first stitch of every row, we're always going to knit that first stitch. So this is rows five and six completed. Row seven, using the contrast color. 
we are going to work two rows with each color. And remember, only work with the half of the stitches. Don't accidentally knit those other stitches. This is the other half, and it should look like that, left over from the leg. We're going to deal with that later. Only work with these current stitches, half of your stitch count. Row seven, right side, using contrast color, knit one, knit one, slip one with yarn in back to last stitch. Knit one, slip one with yarn in back. Knit one, so now we're knitting, you see that main color column, we'll be knitting that. And the slip stitch is coming from that little polka dot pearl bump right there. Knit one, slip one. Knit one, slip one. For you English style knitters, knit one, slip one. Whoopsies. Oh, this might be a good little teaching lesson. I just dropped a stitch. Do you see what happened? Oh my gosh, do I have to undo my entire sock and start all over? No. This is how I rescue my dropped stitches. Just pop it onto the needle, and it's missing a little ladder. Oh, ooh, it's missing that most recent main color. Just pull it through, pop it back onto the needle. Ooh, we're good to go. You're a stitch doctor. Keep on going. Knit one, slip one. As you do these contrast color rows, you'll notice that you get these staggered uh, pearl bump effect. The staggered pearl bump effect. So where it was slipped that last time, now it's the next stitch. So you're going to get this checkerboard. Um, every other time you're working the contrast color, it uh, you get a slip stitch in the alternate column. So you're never doing the same slip stitch that you just did from the previous time. So this pattern will start to emerge pretty soon for you. We need to slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one. Keep on doing that till the end of your row. And those are the techniques for this section. Follow the rows closely and you'll get this beautiful slip stitch, little seed stitch checkerboard kind of effect. So finish row seven all the way to the end here and then work row eight with your contrast color, and you're going to repeat rows one through eight of your pattern repeat the number of times I tell you in the pattern. So look at your PDF really closely. You'll repeat rows one through eight, three, four, five, six, or seven times, resulting in, I'm gonna need 12 contrast color stripes for my size. Pay attention to the fabric and to the instructions, and this counts as one contrast color stripe. Do you see that little polka dot? rows, the polka dot rows we did for rows three and four, that's one contrast color stripe. I'm working on my second contrast color stripe. And for size three, I need to see 12 of those. One, I'm working on my second one. We'll be making a little square of slip stitches. So follow the rows closely and I'll see you at the end of the heel flap to see if your sock looks like mine. This is what your finished heel flap should look like. I have 12 contrast color stripes for size three, but you might need eight 10, 12, 14, 16. Look at your pattern to know the number of stripes you need. It's basically a square. I just love those slip stitches. Let's do the heel turn, row one, right side. Break your contrast color, leaving a tail about this long. That's your bump color, that slip stitch bump. So I broke the contrast color using main color, knit to last stitch. As I knit to my last stitch, I'm going to work a couple stitches and then I'm going to start doing the weave-in Steven, trapping that broken yarn tail into the fabric so I don't have to weave it in later. Knit to the last stitch, slip one with yarn in front. I'll see you at the end of row one, right side. At the end of row one, Bring the yarn forward to slip one with yarn in front, row two, wrong side, the yarn is in back, knit one, purl to last stitch, purling all of the stitches until you reach the last stitch to slip one with yarn in front. Really easy rows one and two. 
At the end of row two, wrong side, slip one with yarn in front. Rows three and four. We're going to work some short rows and follow your pattern closely to make sure you're following the right size. On row three, I need to knit 23 for size three. Knit 23 for size three, but look at your pattern. You might need to knit 17 for the first size or 26 for that fourth size. After you knit your stitches, I just knit 23 for size three. Make sure you knit the right number of stitches. Slip, slip, knit. Slip one knitwise, slip another one knitwise, and knit those two stitches together through the back loop. One more time, the slip, slip, knit. Slip one knitwise, slip the second one knitwise, knit those two stitches together through the back loop and then knit one. Turn to work wrong side. Row four, wrong side. Slip one purl wise. Purl five. One, two, three, four, and five. Purl two together. Purl two stitches together and purl one. Turn to work right side. Now we're going to work the heel turn pattern repeat, rows one and two. I have all my stitches on these two needles, so if you're working with circular needles, then you could have your circular needles working with these, and the other half of the stitches, they're just hanging out till later. Row one right side of heel turn pattern repeat, slip one knitwise, so as if to knit, insert the needle into the front of the stitch knitwise and slip it off. Knit to one stitch before gap. What does that mean? Knit until you reach one stitch before, oh, look at that, that's the gap. That's where you turned the work. So we wanna knit until you, you are one stitch before that gap. So this is the gap, stop here. This is one stitch before the gap. Slip, slip, knit. Slip knitwise, slip the next stitch knitwise. Knit those two together through the back loop like this. And then knit one. Turn to work wrong side. Row two, wrong side. Slip one purl wise, like this. Purl to one stitch before gap. One, two. Yeah, I don't count my stitches. I just look at my knitting. So I'm purling everything and I'm starting to look at where's the gap? Ooh, look at that. It's really obvious. It's right there. So I need to stop right here before this stitch. Purl to one stitch before the gap. Here we are. This is the gap. Stop one stitch before the gap. Purl two together. This stitch and the next stitch across the gap. Purl those two together. And finally, purl one. Turn to work right side. Repeat those two rows until you have worked all the way to each end. So as you work these instructions, you'll be closing the, the gap each time and you'll be eating up these stitches to turn the heel. So repeat rows one and two of heel turn pattern repeat until you can't do it anymore. So row one, slip one knitwise, knit to one stitch before the gap. Let me show you that slip, slip, knit again. So there's the gap, it's really obvious. If you wanna place a split ring marker each time you reach that gap, that's totally fine. So if you turn, you could place a marker in that gap. So you could go, oh, that's the gap. And you gotta slip, slip, knit. Okay, remove the marker if you wanna place a marker. I don't do this, but it might help you see that gap better. Slip, slip, knit. Knit one, turn to work wrong side. So whenever you turn, you're making a gap. So at the moment you turn, before you do anything on the next row, if you wanna place a marker on your right needle when you turn, that can help you mark where the gap is. Slip one purl wise, purl to one stitch before the gap. 
let's see if we can eyeball it and not use that stitch marker. Where's the gap? So you can pull your knitting and ooh, look at that, there's the space. So you wanna stop one stitch before that gap. Pearl. Oh, I don't want to go too far. There's the gap. So stop one stitch before that gap and purl two together. That's going to close that gap. And don't forget to purl one at the end of the wrong side. There we go. So if you want to use your markers, that's the gap before. If you want to mark the gap on the right side, you could place a stitch marker when you turn to look at the right side. You could place a marker to mark. That's where the gap is. Slip one knitwise, knit to one stitch before the gap on row one. Keep on going until you can't do that anymore. It's gonna eat up all of those stitches. I'm working my last row one right side. I just did a slip slip knit and my final knit one is the final stitch. Depending on your size, if the last thing you do is a slip slip knit and that eats up your final stitch, then that's okay. Just turn to work your final row two. So all my stitches are worked at the end of the right side. Row two, slip one purl wise, purl to one stitch before the gap. I'm at the end of my final row two. I'm one stitch before the gap, purl two together, and purl one, that final stitch. Again, if for your size, that final thing you do is a purl two together, then you're done. You've eaten up all those stitches and it should look like this. You should have this little kind of triangular shape for your heel turn. This will be under the sole of your foot, under your heel. So if your heel doesn't look like this, you may have done something a little differently. So go back, you might have to tink back and uh, try this again. You should get this triangle shape. It shouldn't be a rectangle. It should be a triangle like this. I have 24 stitches for size three, but look at your pattern. You might need 18 stitches for size one, 20 stitches for size two, 24 stitches for size three, 26 size four, or 28 for size five. If you don't have that recommended stitch count, in the next section of the sock, you could just sneak in some extra decreases at the edge. If you have two stitches too many, you could sneak in a decrease at the beginning and at the end, or if you don't have enough stitches, you could sneak in an extra increase later. I'll show you later in the next section what we're gonna be doing, but if, for example, in the next section, you could just sneak in it, make one increase like this. Near the edge, if you don't have the recommended stitch count, just sneak it in at the edge, okay, and nobody will know. So that's the finished heel turn. It's a really fun technique that I use in lots of my socks and make sure that your finished sock for that finished leg and the heel looks like this. What are we gonna do next? We're gonna have to do something here and fill in that space. Beautiful heel, I just love that decorative slip stitch pattern for your heel. Well, those are all the techniques for Clue 2. It's a really fun sock with all these collaged stitch patterns coming together, and we're really getting that blast of contrast with those little tiny slip stitches on the heel. I've never done a slip stitch heel exactly like that, and that's the fun thing about socks is they're these tiny little frames and landscapes that we can do whatever we want. So have some patience with the pattern. If this is your first sock, just keep going round by round. Go at your own pace. Embrace your own pace as you knit your socks. And if you just knit one sock at a time, that's totally fine. It's a lot of new stuff each week, lots of fun techniques. So if you just knit one sock, that's fine. You can knit the second one later. Or if this is just so exciting for you and you wanna knit socks two at a time, you could work the Clue 2 instructions for your right sock and then make an identical sock for your second sock. And lastly, if this is a uh, really easy for you to knit pattern, if you're like a sock pro, a sock expert, then you could do the right sock instructions and follow the left sock instructions for your second sock. But again, there's a lot of new stuff. So take it easy on yourself. Just follow the right sock instructions and make two socks that are just like that. It's gonna look amazing. So Brioche, what do you think is coming up for the next week of clues? Anything could happen. Are you bored?
Are you bored of all these slip stitches? Well, there's a lot of fun stuff coming in the next section, some new things we haven't done before. And if you share your progress on Instagram, you can use hashtag Westnitz Surprise Sock Along 2023, Westnitz Surprise Sock Along 2023, or SSAL 2023, Surprise Sock Along. And share your progress on Ravelry too. There's the Ravelry group. So let's see what everybody's color palettes are doing. We're gonna get inspired. And I feel like Brioche, you still need a contrast blast sweater, don't you? We're gonna work on that. So have fun with your socks, embrace your own pace, and I can't wait to see where we're going next in this sock adventure.